Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a paper and oil capacitor. All right, so I got uh, some tissue paper right here. The thickness of the paper will determine the voltage handling of the capacitor, but also if you have thicker paper, it's gonna be harder to make and you'll get a cap that is a lot less capacitance for a given amount of space. In this case, you wanna make a tone cap for a guitar, uh, but you could also use these for like a passive equalizer or anything where there really isn't any significant voltage present. All right, so I'm just gonna trace this out with a Sharpie. I'm gonna make a 12 inch capacitor. This uh, paper is about inch and a quarter wide uh, as I cut it out. I'm making the dielectric sheets right now. There's gonna be two of these. We're making a four layer sandwich. And I'll just go across the top real quick. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with a pair of scissors. Try to be careful not to rip the paper. It's important not to have any rips or tears. Also, any kind of pinholes are gonna pose a major problem. Basically, you won't have a capacitor, you'll have a resistor. So <laughs> be careful and look for any voids as you're working. Now, I'm just making a quick video for you to show you how to do this. If you wanna take this to the next level, there's a lot of things that you could do to improve the quality of the capacitor. Uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm not going to show you all those things, but I'll tell you that you can improve the quality by getting the moisture out of the paper. There's going to be some moisture in this paper, no matter what, just because it's exposed to the atmosphere. What I've done in the past is I would just take this and put it in a toaster oven for on the you know warm setting for just a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Just got to be careful that you don't brown or burn the paper. So it's a little tricky making these capacitors. You know, it's time consuming. It's uh, rewarding though, when you get it hooked up into your guitar and it works. Now I have my two pieces of dielectric paper trimmed out to the dimensions that I'm looking for. Now I have another ruler here, which is skinnier. And that's gonna be really important for cutting out the aluminum foil. Now with the aluminum foil, I've got right here the cheapest stuff I could find. That's sort of a little trick. If you look for the cheap stuff, it's probably gonna be thinner. And you want the thinnest materials that you can get. Oh, look at this, I gotta peel this off. This is another thing, guys. Remember that. This is plexiglass. You could use a pane of glass, but ideally you wanna have the smoothest possible surface to work on. That's gonna help you. I mean, that's a big trick right here. It's gonna help you to have a really good capacitor. The smoother the surface, the tighter your coil will be. And the tighter your coil, the higher the capacitance for a given amount of space. All right, so this foil is 12 inches across, and I'm just gonna use this ruler to trim it down so that it is one inch wide and 12 inches long. Like I said, it's a four layer sandwich that we are making. There are two plates and two pieces of the dielectric, which is paper in this case, until we add oil later on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead with my scissors now and cut out my plates. Okay, I got my plates trimmed out now. I've got my paper, I've got a nice flat work surface. If you have a pane of glass, it's probably gonna be better than this. This is plexiglass, it's got some static to it. Uh, so. You're first gonna lay down some paper, okay? And then you're gonna put down your aluminum foil on top of that. I trimmed off a little bit from the end of the foil on this one so that the paper is longer. You're gonna wanna do that for both of them, actually. All right, so now that this is down, uh, the next thing I wanna do is get a piece of wire in there. And there is definitely a little bit of a trick to this. So what I'm gonna do is lay the wire down and fold the foil up leaving about an a eighth inch. So eighth inch of uh, foil will be folded up, roughly, you know, and uh, get my wire in there and push it down. And with my fingernail, I'm just gonna kind of crimp it. Now I'm just using my right angle pliers to roll this a little bit to help create a better crimp. Okay, at this point, I've got a pretty decent crimp on there. If you can find some copper foil that's very, very thin, which is unlikely, you could potentially solder it on there, but you would have to be extremely careful not to create any rough spots because that will rip through the paper. All right, so now, uh, actually, side by side, <clears throat> I'm going to lay down the paper and the foil for the second plate, 
and I'm gonna put the wire down and crimp that in there in the opposite manner. And once again, I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip a little bit off the end here. Now that I have that folded over and crimped with my fingernails, I'm just gonna roll it a little bit. All right, looks like I got about half a roll on there, a little bit further. Okay, that's just gonna help to ensure that I got a decent crimp. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna take this little section of two pieces and lay it on top of this. And then, I mean, basically we're gonna have a capacitor. When you have two pieces of metal separated by a dielectric, you have a capacitor. So it'll be a very poor capacitor, but it will be one. And you want to line this stuff up as best as you can. You want the metal to be dead center, ideally. Lining it up is the hardest part, I think, other than maybe rolling it. That's because rolling is very tricky, too. All right. So I got everything lined up as good as I can do it. I'm going to now use a bit of wire spool right there as a weight, and I got a bit of solder right here as another weight. Let's just keep things from shifting on me. You don't want to get your coil to skew at all. I'm going to first get it started by rolling that paper over, and then I'm going to wrap this paper over that one, and this is the part where if you're going to fail, it's probably going to happen right here at the beginning. You want to make sure that these two plates don't touch. All right, I do believe I have isolation between the plates right now, so I'm just going to begin to roll this. You want to keep tension on this the whole time, and you're going to have to move these weights around to keep equal tension going on. You know, before I go any further, I got an LCR meter over here. I doubt you guys are going to see it very well, you know. But maybe I can position this in a way where you can see it. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So I'm just going to quickly take a measure and make sure nothing's shorting out. So I really don't want to waste any more time. I don't want to proceed further unless this is actually going to work. Okay. I think we're good. Awesome. All right. So I can continue. Got to take your time here. Make sure you don't get the coil going all skewed and flip flopping all over the place. That's a recipe for failure. It's very tricky. Uh, don't pinch too tight with your pliers, you know, and make sure that your pliers have a smooth surface on both sides. You do not want to create holes in the paper or rip the paper in any way. Otherwise, you'll have a bad capacitor and you just wasted your time. actually going pretty good. I don't see any flaws yet. Still have uh, quite a ways to go, but I'm past the, the initial part where, you know, most likely to fail. <laughs> and a little gunk on my players, just cleaning them off. You want smooth, smooth surfaces everywhere. It's just going to make this whole thing work a lot better and your chances of success are higher. It is Looking pretty good to me, though. I'm going very slow. That's what you want to do. If you go fast, you're going to wind up with a really sloppy uh, coil, and chances are it won't work as well, if it works at all. <laughs> well, it's going pretty straight, you know, given the, the nature of the beast. It's hand-wound, so very hard trying to keep it straight. And trying to keep tension on this, don't be surprised if you fail your first try at this or even your second try, you know. Uh, you might have to make it a few times before you find success. Which just adds to the great feeling at the end when you get it hooked up and it actually works. <laughs> You'll feel a lot better. 
just uh, after you make a couple of these, you realize it's uh, not really economical to try to make these for any sort of level of production. You would need a machine to really do that. It's just too time consuming and the chances for failure are high. The chances for repeatability are low. <laughs> so not really a good production method. This is just for the hobbyist who's interested in learning a little bit about some basic electronics. Capacitor is one of your basic uh, passive components. So it's good to, to learn about this if you're just getting into electronics. Uh, if you're just doing it for the fun of it, that's cool. Okay, so far we got a pretty decent coil. I'm actually going to just fire up my hot glue gun right now. Uh, I want to make sure it's warm for when we get close to the end. Hopefully I can do that without screwing anything up here. <clears throat> I'm going to use the hot glue gun to to basically stop the coil from becoming unraveled as we move on to the next stage, which will be introducing the oil. I'm going to actually have to probably trim this back a little bit so, so that it's easier to seal. And I don't really mean seal because we're not sealing it yet. I'm just going to try to get the coil to not come unraveled when I take my fingers off of it. All right, so to do that, I'm going to cut each of these layers just a little bit. All right, so basically what I want to do is make it so that the very bottom layer of paper is the longest thing and each layer on top is just a little bit shorter. Just like that. All right, hopefully you can see that. Okay, almost there. Almost there. So now we're going to use that top layer of paper to seal this up. You could probably use some super glue here, but it's risky because you'll probably glue your fingers or you'll glue the cap to the surface. So uh, the hot glue might be the best solution, I think. It dries fast, you know, and does the job. And it doesn't take much. I'm just going to put a couple drops down and then we're done. All right, I'm just going to hold it in place for a moment and let that cool. And then I'll take a measurement and hopefully we still have a capacitor. <laughs> hopefully. All right. Come on. Oh, look at that. It's holding. Oh, thank you. Okay. So now the, the next step is we're going to just check this out with my LCR meter. And hopefully we still have a capacitor. Right, I got this on uh, capacitance. So don't turn the light on. Yeah, okay. So let's set the measure capacitance. Sweet, we got a working capacitor here. So this is measuring uh, 17.3 nanofarads, which is the same as 0 0.017 microfarads. Now we're gonna submerge this in oil for the next phase. I'm going to just bend these leads very carefully. I'm using my pliers so that I don't bend the wire within the capacitor. So I'm just holding it right there. I'm going to bend it this way, create a 90 degree angle. This is going to be a necessary step for uh, deposit and extraction of the capacitor from the bowl. Okay. And it fits in there, which is good. So I have this little plastic bowl. And now what I'm going to do is pour some mineral oil in there. Now, mineral oil is what they would have used in all of those vintage paper and oil capacitors, not vegetable oil, as some people suggest. <laughs> the vegetable oil, I'm sure, works. And it's something that's used by certain manufacturers nowadays. Uh, as for the tonal properties of vegetable oil versus mineral oil, I do not know. I can only tell you that mineral oil is what they would have used in the old days. And that's what I have right here. It's also known as intestinal lubricant. All right, so I'm going to pour some of this in there, basically just enough to submerge the capacitor. Okay, that's really all it takes. Not a whole lot. And now it's going to start to bubble. You can leave this in here for as long as you want, really. I think probably 15 minutes is sufficient. 
you could probably go as much as a half hour. You got to be careful. If you go too long, the paper will actually just fall apart and the capacitor will unwind and you just wasted your time. <laughs> so I'll let it go until uh, the bubbling either stops, slows down, or 15 minutes comes to pass. Probably about five minutes when I pull this out. Only because it's a demonstration video, you get the idea. And we will definitely see an increase in capacitance. Now what I have right here is a little bit of heat shrink tubing that I have trimmed to approximately slightly larger than the capacitor. And we're gonna actually encapsulate the capacitor in this. Inch and 9 16 by 5 eighths, all right. Now this is good, I got a paper towel handy too because we're gonna wanna wipe off some of the excess uh, when we get to that point. Now I'm pulling it out, it's only been maybe five minutes and I'm gonna grab this with my pliers again and we wanna straighten this lead out, we're gonna need it nice and straight. And we'll do that to the other one as well. Okay, now we are ready to slide this jabby over there and I have my soldering iron going right now. I'm gonna use that to slowly heat this guy up. I'm gonna move our plastic right out of the way. I don't think we need this here. We're done with that. Okay, I'm gonna set down my paper towel and grab my soldering iron. And I'm just gonna use this lower portion. It's a lower temp this way and just kind of slowly shrink this guy down on top of the capacitor. Now this is not our, our full seal of the capacitor. It's just gonna get us most of the way there. You're gonna see some oil coming out at this point. It probably makes some smoke, it's okay. Just don't breathe it in. My hot glue gun is also on and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that in just a second here. I'm not going all the way with the ends here because uh, the hot glue is going to take it the rest of the way. All right, so done with the soldering iron. I'm just going to set that off to the side for the moment. And I'm going to take my hot glue gun, which is pouring all over that wood. <laughs> and we're going to actually pour some into the end. I want to first, though, with my paper towel, just wipe along that metal very carefully to ch try to remove some of the oil. And uh, there's probably going to be some oil pooling in this end. And I'm just gonna sort of use my paper towel to kind of suck it out. We don't want any excess oil there. We get a worse seal by having excess oil. So now I'm just gonna use my hot glue to kind of fill this up. And now I am not creating a seal, the full seal. I'm just getting us a partial seal at the moment so we can continue working. And then uh, once this is dried a little bit, uh, you know, cooled enough that we can actually turn it over without it falling out, <laughs> then we'll do the other side as well. Okay, and same process here. So when I trimmed that heat heat uh, shrink, I made it a little bit longer than the capacitor so that we could fill that extra space with hot glue to try to create a bit of a seal. Okay, we've got it. And I'm just gonna go along that wire just a little bit and over the edge just a little bit and this is just gonna help us to get to the next phase, all right? So now we essentially have what looks like a pretty decent little capacitor. And I'm sure that after it cools down, we can get a fairly accurate measurement of what it will be in the end. So as the capacitor is warm, it's gonna actually register higher than it will when it's cold. That is the nature of paper and oil. Hopefully we still have a capacitor, and that we do. 31 nanofarads, 31 point 6968 it's going to drop a little bit as it cools so yeah wow that's so that's a point point oh three one point oh three one microfarads that's pretty decent little tone cap right there so now it's not done all right we're pretty close to done and if you wanted to at this point you could probably just call it quits but the problem is we've used hot glue to seal it, and that's definitely uh, a non-permanent thing. The hot glue will eventually allow the mineral oil to seep out. So the only permanent solution at this point is to use epoxy. 
And that's what I have this other dish for. And I have some Gorilla Epoxy. What we're gonna do is mix some up and then using an applicator, we're just gonna cover the surface thinly with the, the entire thing with epoxy and let that sit overnight to, to dry and harden. And then we'll come back tomorrow and, and take a look at our finished capacitor. And the capacitance will probably be just slightly lower than 0.031, it'll probably be like 0.03, something like that. right here. 